Hey guys, this is Veron from Speaker of the Stars, and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing a traditional drawing, but it's not a usual traditional traditional drawing. I'm actually gonna work on the cover for this particular sketchbook. Now, this sketchbook is one of, are one of those buys that I just enter an art store and can't really leave without buying anything. And a sketchbook's pretty cheap, and you can never have enough sketchbooks. So I picked it up a craft, it's a craft cover sketchbook. It has plain, slightly creamish color paper inside. It was pretty cheap from what I remember, so I just have it here. I've had it stored here uh, for future use. So I'm not really done using the Black Rodia sketchbook just yet. I think we have about 20 to 30 pages to go with that. So I might not be using this particular sketchbook in a while, but I really came to love doing like covers and section headers for notebooks. So um, if you're not familiar, I had this sketchbook before that was white, and I realized you could draw on it using um, a pen, a fine liner, or markers. Like I used the Faber Castle Pit artist pen markers for that. And I really enjoyed the process of drawing a cover for it. Granted, it wasn't perfect since I just, like what I'm doing now, I did it sort of freehand. I didn't really use much of the rulers or any other tools to make it look like it was geometric and clean. And I kind of do like doing that. I'm not, I don't know, I wanted to keep that hand-drawn feel to the covers. So even for this version, I wanted to make it look like someone drew it. I did put a dividing line around the middle, like down the middle, uh, vertically, just so that I have some like some guiding, guiding line to keep the proportions more or less straight and not like leaning off to one side. But I still wanted to keep that, um, you know, how to how do I put this like crafty feel to it. This is the second time I've done a cover for a sketchbook. I don't really do it that often since I take like years to finish a sketchbook. But I feel like I want to do it a bit more. I've bought another craft notebook and it has a set of three and it was like 150 pesos so I gave in and bought it. <laughs> and I feel like I'll be drawing undercovers too sometime. But maybe in the near future maybe. And I've also done like section dividers, so if you watch like some of my sketchbook tours, especially the more notebooky ones and not like the watercolor paper ones, you will see that I would do a section divider for Inktober, and then once Inktober was done, I'd do another sectioner that showed um, where Inktober ends and what date it is and some information like that. And I really enjoyed doing that. Now I'm not really super good at it yet. I feel like I still need to divide, diversify the kinds of designs that I do. And I just tend to bias towards this like compass, um, some somewhat complicated geometric looking design. I feel like there are tons of other stuff I could still explore, but I enjoy it. And I don't know if I should open up like commissions or something for, you know, to do this kind of thing because it's really, really fun and I'd love to be able to do it a bit more. Now, I don't know why, but okay, maybe I do. Um, I've recently been somewhat really into the theme of like a compass or a navigator or like some instrument, like an astrolabe that, you know, just like spins and has interlocking stuff. I've been really into it lately. I guess because when I was really, really young, I was really obsessed with stars. I used to... You know how on the PC when in the early 2000s, I think it was Encyclopedia Dramatic. No, it was Encyclopedia. I forgot. <laughs> There's this encyclopedia that you can download on your computer, the program, and you can just keep. It's like a you know, Wikipedia but offline. Um, so you know how with Wikipedia, you can click on an article. There are links to other articles, and you just keep on right-clicking on that, and on and on and on. The thing with Wikipedia, the reason people and professors don't like using it is because people can edit the articles in it, thus making it a not super reliable source of information. 
with the encyclopedia program I had when I was a kid, it's basically an encyclopedia but it was digital. So the sources were verified. At the time, all the facts were thought to be true. And it's not something people can easily edit. So it's a type of reference that you can use to cite in your papers and stuff like that. And I remember spending hours and hours and hours just clicking on stars and constellations and galaxies and how things work in the universe. And I even remember like there's this interactive part for the stars where you can just click on a star and you'd get information on it. So it was, I would spend so much hours on that. And yes, I'm a bit of a nerd. I was, I still am. Now I'm just a weeb nerd. <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoy that. So I guess it's not too off-brand or it's not too surprising that my branding for my art channel is star-related. I, I guess it's only that I sort of process that because like I've loved stars and I never lost interest for it. But when I became a teenager, like I sort of like fell out of it for a while. Like I couldn't really talk much about like space time theorem anymore because it went over my head as a kid. But it's also not that surprising that I love incorporating like star and measuring system type of detail to it or to my band. <laughs> well, that's oddly got sort of a little bit deep, I guess. Not really. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, so we are lining stuff in white because I felt like it needed, needed a bit more pop. Well, I do really love the star background. I feel like I should have incorporated the craft paper color a bit more. It sort of defeated the purpose of drawing the cover and making it a craft cover color. Uh, or a, a brown cover color. I guess that's something I could learn in the future, but I still do like how it, I super like how it turned out. Um, one thing though, this is the Sakura Jelly. I uh, no, this isn't Sakura. This is the um, Uniball Signal Angelic White uh, Gel Pen. So it has white ink, as you can see. And I used to use the broad version, but my problem with it is that since it's a gel pen, it really doesn't work well with lay on top of itself. So it becomes streaky and it would skip just sometimes, but I still feel it's the best, um, it's the best gel pen right now. There's one called the Sakura, uh, Decorese pen. It's supposed to be for writing on glass and acrylic. It's supposed to be acrylic paint. I haven't really tried it yet because I still have two pieces of this white signal pen. But there's a reason why I busted out this white poster paint because it wasn't really giving me the effect that I wanted with the gel pen. So I'm painting these parts white because I wanted to give it I wanted to give a bit more like bright contrast and pop to the entire thing because like keeping it brown felt a little bit too dark and dull and there's not enough contrast in the piece. Hopefully poster paint is water based. I hope it doesn't ruin my brush pen, but we shall see when I use it again. It's probably not. I washed it pretty thoroughly after this. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. It's not my super usual content, but it's something I do enjoy doing. Uh, if you like, feel free to like like the video. If you're interested in more of my stuff, please do subscribe um, or comment. Like I enjoy. I want to talk to people. <laughs> anyway, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and DeviantArt for stuff, and I'll see you around.